Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY23 earnings conference call of Kalyan Jewelers India Limited. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Agarwal from Strategic Growth Advisors. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Kalyan Jewelers India Limited Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call. Uh, we have with us Mr. Ramesh Kalyan Raman, Executive Director, Mr. Sanjay Raghuraman, CEO, Mr. Swaminathan, CFO, Mr. Sanjay Mehrutra, Head of Strategy and Corporate Affairs, and Mr. Abraham George, Head of Investor Relations and Treasury. I hope everyone got an opportunity to go through our financial results uh, and presentation which just got uploaded on the company's website uh, and stock exchanges. Uh, we will begin the call with opening remarks from management, following which we will have the forum open for question and answer session. Uh, before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in the today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Ramesh Kalyan Raman, Executive Director of Kalyan Dwellers India Limited, to give his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. FY 2023 was an excellent year for the company. Uh, recorded revenue of over 14,000 crore a growth in excess of 13, 30% over FY 2022, PAT of 432 crore. This is despite a one-time extraordinary pre-tax write-off of around 33 crore, relating to divestment of certain non-core assets. Excluding the one-time extraordinary write-off, the PAT for the year is 457 crore, a growth, of growth in excess of 100% over FY 2022. Last financial year has also been a remarkable one in the history of the company. While driving the day-to-day -day execution, we had developed and successfully rolled out a strategy and roadmap to further improve the cash uh, flow profile of the business and build a robust return on capital profile. Primary area of focus under the strategy roadmap has been to expand showroom network predominantly through the more capital efficient FOCO model franchise model. During the last financial year, we launched 15 franchised showrooms in India as a part of our phase four expansion. The first half of this financial year should see launch of around 30 showrooms and remaining 22 showrooms during the second half of the year, totaling 52 showrooms for financial year 2024. We are continuing to receive many inbound franchisee inquiries for the non-South markets in India and have started engaging with prospective franchisee partners for the next set of expansion. In addition, we also have started getting inquiries for South markets and we plan to launch the first set of pilot franchised showroom in South in the financial year. This will be over and above the 52 showrooms planned for the non-South markets. In addition to launching new showrooms through the franchised model, we also have initiated steps to convert some of the existing owned showrooms in South India to franchised showrooms and have made considerable progress in the same. We have also drawn up plans to reduce invested capital in the Middle East and improve its return profile by converting some of the existing owned showrooms to franchised ones and simultaneously expanded the showroom network to the franchise model. There has been a slight delay in setting up the vertical, 
largely due to the local regulatory compliances and we expect to launch the first franchised showroom shortly another significant area of focus has been to undertake divestments of non core assets and use the proceeds to reduce the capital employed in the business thereby lightening the balance sheet we have signed lois with prospective buyers for some of the non core assets and expect to complete the first set of divestments during the first half of this financial year all of these steps will enable us to witness significantly higher free cash generation during fy 2024 which in part we expect to reduce the existing non gml working capital loans this will reduce our leverage and disproportionately reduce our interest expense as we will be repaying the higher interest cost bearing non gml working capital loans another significant decision has been the announcement of the maiden dividend for the last financial year yet another high focus project which we are excited about this is to transform our digital first platform candier into a truly omni channel one we have drawn up an exciting network expansion plan of at least 30 showrooms during the current financial year through a mix of owned and franchised showrooms talking about the ongoing quarter we had a fantastic start to the financial year and a very strong akshay tritya despite continuing volatile team gold prices we are witnessing encouraging momentum in consumer demand especially around the wedding purchases during the current quarter we are upbeat about the current season and have fully geared up the system to ensure that we have yet another memorable quarter with this let me hand over to sanjay to take you through the financial thank you good afternoon everybody thank you ramesh i'm really very happy to be talking to you all after a solid performance in the just concluded financial year i'll share some details now starting with the just concluded quarter in this just concluded quarter we reported a consolidated revenue of 3382 crores an 18% growth over the same quarter in the previous year consolidated ebitda came in at 257 crores versus 218 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year and consolidated profit after tax pat was 95 crores versus 72 crores during the corresponding quarter of the previous year i shall now give you a break up of the numbers between india and the middle east starting with india our india revenue for the quarter just concluded was rupees 2805 crores versus 2399 crores when compared with the corresponding quarter of the previous year our india q4 ebitda was 217 crores versus 188 crores when compared with the corresponding quarter of the previous financial year and our india profit after tax was 91 crores compared to 70 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year moving now to talk about our middle east business revenue for the quarter in the middle east was about 549 crores compared to 425 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year ebitda in the middle east came in at 42 crores for the quarter versus in the same quarter of the previous year the so middle east business posted a profit of 6 crores for the quarter compared to a profit of 4 crores for the corresponding quarter of the previous year talking now about our e-commerce wing candier the business posted a revenue of 32 crores in the quarter versus 39 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year the quarter recorded a loss of 1.9 crores in candier versus a profit of 2.7 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year during this past quarter we had no bullion sale and our gold coin sale to retail and corporate customers 
was about 115 crores, approximately 4% of total revenue. Moving on now to talk about full year performance. On a consolidated level, our revenue came in at 14,071 crores, a growth of 30% over the previous year. Consolidated EBITDA came in at 1,114 crores versus 815 crores over the previous year. Consolidated PAT for the year came in at 457 crores before a one-time extraordinary write-off of 33 crores versus a profit of 224 crores during the previous year. Moving on now to give you a breakup of these numbers between India and the Middle East, starting with India. For this just concluded year, our India revenue came in at 11,584 crores, a growth of 28% when compared to the previous year. Our India EBITDA for the year was 933 crores versus 692 crores when compared to the previous year. And our India PAT came in at 415 crores compared to 214 crores in the previous year, a growth of 94%. Talking now about our Middle East business, our revenue in the Middle East came in at 2,364 crores for the year, recording a growth of 44% compared to the previous year. And Middle East EBITDA came in at 188 crores for the year versus 123 crores in the previous year. The Middle East business posted a profit of 50 crores for the year compared to 11 crores for the previous year. Talking lastly about our e-commerce wing Candier, the numbers for the year in revenue came in at 157 crores versus 141 crores in the previous year. And the loss for the year was 7.8 crores versus 1.6 crores in the previous year. With this, I'm done with the summary of the financials and we now open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may press star and one to ask a question at this time. We have the first question from the line of Shirish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi Ramesh and team. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, good set of numbers. Uh, if you can touch upon uh, in the volatile gold price market, uh, uh, how this last 45, 50 days, because we also had the escalation of the festive season. So if you can provide some uh, strength uh, to your numbers. Yeah, so without telling you the number, I can only tell you what is happening on the ground for the first 45 days uh, in Q1 versus the first 41 days, uh, 45 days of Q1 of the last year. The growth rate has been extremely strong. It is much stronger than the Q4 growth. Uh, I, I would I would push uh, because there is one other real estate player from uh, TN has given the sales number and quantum for Akshay Trutia. So I am not sure what is the hesitation, uh, but anyway, I'll go with that. But yeah. just tell me uh, how this growth panned out, maybe some qualitative uh, understanding in versus south versus non-south. So uh, south and non-south are, are performing equally well. Uh, in the first 45 days of Q1. Okay. Okay. Uh, one follow-up here uh, on the uh, quarter four performance. When we see that south growth was 4% uh, in the quarter gone by and non-south growth was 38%. Was it largely related to the FOCO addition or there is a qualitative growth in terms of the core uh, standard portion which is also contributing? 
So both of them, yes. Of course, all the most of the new showrooms were added in non-south, and that is why the non-south revenue has grown. And over and above that, one thing is that Q4 has never been a very uh, strong quarter for south. Okay. Actually, if you look at a couple of years before, suddenly after a, after the COVID comeback, the Q4 uh, revenue had a very high base, and we could at least. Uh, we grow only by six seven percent in the last Q4, but even then Q4 base is high for us for South players. Okay, and uh, that is the reason why SSG is a bit softer for South, and uh, the non-South revenue growth, of course, the SSG is stronger than South India. But over and above that, this much percentage difference is because of the new store additions which we have done. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Uh, just one clarification on Foco. Uh, as on date, we have 15 stores. Yeah. And in the opening remark, you said that you will add 52 stores. As of date, is not 15. As of March 31st, is 15. As of today, it is 22. Okay. Okay. Now, what I wanted to clarify, in FY24, yeah. you have guided that 30 stores and 20 stores which will come. Yeah. Uh, so, total 52 stores, you are expanding under Foco model. Yes. So, and all non-south. All non-south. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But would you would you spend a minute or two saying that, because you've been saying this uh, FOCO opportunity in the Middle East also, uh, yeah. which you have not uh, said anything. So maybe if you can give some color. Okay. So uh, in Middle East, we had signed an LOI for uh, franchise and we were supposed to open in the Q4 or at least early Q1. But there has been a delay in implementation there, and uh, we still go with that LOI, and we are now, I think, all the uh, technical issues there have been solved, and I think hopefully it should be opened in Q1 or maximum of early Q2. So after that, after the pirate phase, then Middle East expansion uh, with franchise, etc., we will explore more. But would you have any number in mind which we can build in, in our model for FI24? FI24 better be safe. We don't put a model for expansion, too much of expansion in the Middle East. And uh, we will be keeping on updating, you know, and better put it that way. Okay. Okay. Uh, my last question on the gold metal loan. Uh, as of March uh, 23, uh, would you be able to give us or quantify some more details? What is the quantum? What is it that we want to achieve? And uh, what is the uh rate at which we are we are expanding uh shirish uh, abraham here yes so gold metal loan balance as on march 23 is uh, 1853 crore okay this is consolidated um, of which india is 1091 uh, and the remaining is middle east uh, we have been able to increase this number from 1496 last year uh, from uh, and so we've made meaningful increase in the Middle East and we've done about 100 crores increase in India and from here we have probably another 50 75 crore headroom in India to increase beyond which we will need further sanctioning of limits sub limits from the overall uh, banking limits. Mm -hmm. Abram, thanks for that. But I'm just reading a uh, little more in detail. You said that there is a divestment of non core asset which is going to happen. So yes. directionally, uh, that money should come in and our gold metal loan should come down by half. Uh, is that assumption uh, is right? No. no. So whatever debt repayment that we are planning for the financial year, we are planning for repayment of the higher cost non-gold metal loan debt. And in parallel, we will also be trying to uh, increase the gold metal loan limits within the bank. So in, 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 an, in, in a, any case, uh, gold metal loan uh, will not come down from this level. So, what is the non-gold metal loan uh, debt today? Uh, it is 1,650 around. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Uh, I'll come back to the queue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nilay Shah from Moon Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, let me just... Uh uh get a little bit deeper into this growth question sorry to uh, you know, Shah, your voice is muffled uh, could you please uh, use your handset to ask a question yeah hello is it thank you yes sir please continue yeah okay so uh i want to talk about the growth for fiscal 24 52 uh, new franchisee stores to be added 
plus the fact that these 23, 24 stores added uh, this financial year or last financial year, those stores will mature. So can you give some sort of indication of how the growth is likely to pan out? And, you know, even companies like Titan have been giving an indication of what the growth is. So I agree with Shirish, you know, why is there so much reluctance to give a broad range of growth guidance for fiscal 24? Yeah, so there is no, uh, what you call, hesitation. Uh, I will tell you, I can give you a view on it, wherein, as you rightly yes. said, 52, 52 new showrooms which we are going to open in the running financial year, uh, that itself should take care of at least a mid-teen, uh, late-teen revenue growth, okay? And okay. late teens from the uh, franchise stores, okay, sir? Yeah, and again, in addition, SSG of the showrooms is usually 5-6% of the existing showroom. Right. And the full year revenue for the showrooms which we opened in the last, uh, what do you call, last financial year, okay, that full year, full year revenue should also come for the next financial year. Got it, sir. So we are looking at 18 plus SSG plus the fact that the old stores mature and you get the full impact of those revenues coming through for the full financial year and fiscal 24. That is very clear. Thank you, sir. Um, the other question is on margins. Uh, you know, for the quarter, you reported what, about 7.7% uh, operating margins. Uh, this appears a little bit lower in context of, you know, what you've said in the past before the uh, franchisee stores opened up, but really the impact of franchisee stores for this financial year is going to be fairly low, given that there are only 14, st uh, 15 stores as you close the financial year. So 7.7% margins for this quarter, given the uh, South non South mix also has improved through the financial year. Uh, how should we think about margins going forward? Now I understand that there's only 52 of these franchisee stores opened up and last year you, or last quarter, I think you spoke about about 5% PVT margins, I think, uh, for these stores. Yeah. Um, so how should we think about margins going forward? So I think, you know, first of all, let us uh, uh, do a deep, deep, deep chicken analysis on this. Uh, if you look at the gross margin, mm -hmm. you know, in Q4, it was, in India, it is like 15.6%, okay. Hmm. And, and, uh, I, I meaning franchisee revenue according to you, what should be the percentage of franchisee revenue on the top line? Normally, I would take it as uh, about 60% uh, of your uh, Kalyan store. Yeah, per showroom. Yeah. So 15 showrooms of franchise uh, with the first time revenue of the, uh, what, uh, nine showrooms which we opened in Q4. Okay. So, the revenue, if you look at for just for a conversation, if you keep it as 10% of the revenue comes from franchise at 8%, the rest 90% actually have delivered the gross margin is becoming better. Okay, it is in the what 16 16.5 range again, it's coming to back to our old uh, 16 16.5% 16 uh, margin on gross level. So EBITDA, I think we should slowly start moving from EBITDA margins and gross margins to PBT margins so that we are both on the right direction. Because as we said, the next year expansion is completely going to be on FOCO model, okay? And we might also start doing South franchisee. So if we go in this direction of uh, trying to uh, build an EBITDA margin, I think we will get lost somewhere because we will not be looking at the same, we will not be looking in the same direction, no. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management... Yes, sir, did I answer you? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. The participant has left the queue. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe he will rejoin. I'll take him back. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question is with regards to the CAPEX number. Uh, if we see for the year FI23, uh, after the cash flow, it comes to around 187 crores on the control basis and around 160 odd crores on the uh, standalone basis. Uh, 
uh, now we understand you know that the capex uh, for this store uh, is around uh, five six orders for the stores that we have opened, and I think we have opened uh, our own stores of around eleven uh, eleven or twelve own stores. So in that context, uh, what is the remaining capex for? No, capex uh, will be what 80, 90 crore will be maintenance capex itself, and the rest will be for the new stores which we open. So the new stores which we open also, uh, the Foco model. Even in the Foco model, we have done a model wherein, uh, except the first three showrooms, the fit out capex was done by Kalyan Jewelers. So that is the capex increase which you see. Okay, okay. So, sir, uh, in future also uh, open out of the 23 showrooms opened last year, uh, uh -huh. 20 showrooms capex we have only added. Okay, okay. And plus the 90 crore maintenance capex. So th that is uh, that is how it, it should be looked. Sure. So, sir, so going ahead also, uh, like uh, the proposed one that will be opened, will the capex be incurred by us, or uh, I mean, how should we build the capex going ahead? Given you know that we were thinking that this Foco would be a asset light model in that sense. You are talking about the 52 showrooms of the yes, yes, right? Yes. So these 52 has been signed as capex uh, done by Kalyan, wherein the fixed asset will be done by uh, Kalyan, and uh, that is the model which people are opting. So actually, we have two models. One is that full capex, meaning inventory plus fit out, will be done by franchise. That is model number one. Model number two is that inventory will be put by them and fit out will be done by Kalyan. So preference for people is to put money on inventory rather than into fit out, and people opt for the option two. Uh, and the 52 which we have signed is for meaning all the 52 has been signed for that. Also, sir, one follow-up here. So in that case, does the margin profile changes with the uh, the partner then? Can you uh, tell me once more? Yeah. So, so I'm saying because we are in the. So there, we have put a fee for AMC, meaning at, uh, uh, for the for the asset which we uh, build for them. So there's an AMC. There, there's an AMC in case the asset is on us, we charge them. Okay. And so if you can share that number, so it will help us to build in the margins. So we charge what one percent, right, Sanjay? Yeah, so it's like one percent of the revenue we charge for assets. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, thanks for that. Uh, so my next question, you know, is with regards to the interest cost. Now, if you see the interest cost on a quarterly basis, uh, it is you know kind of consistently uh, going up. Now I understand that you know the interest rates have also moved in the interim. Uh, so if you can help us out, how should we build the interest cost? Given that you know you will also be reducing the debt during the same period and. Some portion would also be shifted to the gold or metal loan, which would be a lower interest cost uh, loan. So, how should we build the interest cost going ahead? Yeah, so interest the, the conversion to gold loan is not going to be predominantly, uh, majorly high for the running financial year because we have a headroom only what 50, 75 crore more for us to increase our gold loan. Okay, debt reduction plan is yes, it is there. We will start with the. Uh, Cash which is going to come in from aircraft, and of course, uh, there are there is going to be free cash flow for the company in this running year, and there are going to be savings. Uh, the savings is going to be disproportionately higher than the percentage of uh, debt reduction which we will do. So the plan for this financial year debt reduction should be in the range of 15% on a gross level. And interest reduction should be more than that because this is going to be reduced. The non-GML is going to be reduced. All the 15 percent. Okay, okay, okay. So, sir, when you say gross, uh, I mean that is uh, the total uh, loan of around 3,000 odd crores. That's the number you're uh, saying. Hello. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so 15 percent on a gross level. Yes, you are right. Yeah, so that's like three thousand four hundred crores, right? India. Oh, sir. India. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sir. I will come back in the queue, sir, for more questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anurag Tayal from HSBC. Please go ahead. Oh hi, thank you, Ramesh and team, for taking my question. Uh, 
Hi. Uh, so I have uh, just one basic question. Uh, so now you have around 22 odd franchisee stores opened across North India, and few of them are open for more than six months. So I mean, how has been your experience so far in terms of you know how the store are delivering in terms per the throughput you expected? Inventory terms or studied ratio are they different from your own stores? So some color on that would really help. Hi, this is Sanjay here. Yes, Sanjay. Uh, so, so uh, in terms of difference, uh, there's no real difference to talk about except that some of these outlets are you know slightly smaller in size as compared to uh, our regular outlets. Some of them are as good as big as our larger outlets. Just to give you a frame of reference. Uh, the outlet we opened in Agra this month, the last month, is as big as any of our flagship outlets. So similarly, Gorakhpur. So essentially, it's a market-specific strategy. Mm -hmm. um, this has now been running for about uh, nine months from the earliest outlet, and uh, we've had, uh, you know, good experience. Our franchisee partners have also had a good experience, and I think uh, the uh, studied ratios are uh, in line with what we have budgeted and modeled. Uh, we have uh, already got the same franchise partners who you know, signed up for the initial outlets, putting their hands up for multiple outlets, uh, which they have asked for in other locations. So um, in summary, I'd like to say that uh, you know, it's been progressing the way we uh, envisaged it uh, to pan out. Very good, great, great, thank you a lot. And just a small question. Uh, basically, I can see that apart from your expansion in non-South, you're looking for expansion to franchisee model in South. Then you're looking for expanding the Candare model as well as the Middle East. So you don't understand how much the management bandwidth is it getting too stretched because already you have ambitious plan of opening 50 per stores. So how you know you are managing this entire expect uh, I mean, expansion plans? We have certain leaders who have assigned to different region to look into this. I think the only, uh, you know, different thing that needs to be done is to get the model right at the start. Uh, we have kind of got that down uh, for, to our satisfaction in the India context uh, for the north, north as well as the south. And then, uh, you know, those things are stable. Uh, the modeling phase in Candir is, is now in progress, and I think we will uh, sign a few partners uh, in this quarter. And to that extent, uh, we will have some activity there, but it's handled by a separate team. I don't see any challenges there. Same thing in the Middle East. We've got the model rolled out. Uh, the first couple of LOIs have been signed. There were some um, you know, time lags in the uh, franchisee partners getting their documentation and their um, uh, incorporation of forms, et cetera, uh, stabilized. Uh, that's now done. So in this first half of this financial year, the first franchisee outlet in the Middle East will come online. As also um, uh, for for Candir, South India will also definitely happen. Thanks, thanks a lot, and all the best for New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naresh Vaswani from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, first question is on the margins. So, if I look at Earlier, FY23 versus 22. I'm sorry to interrupt. It, also, your audio is not clear. So yeah, now, is it, use your hand is it proper? Yes, sir. Please continue. Thank you. Yeah, so my first question is on the margins. So, for FY23, uh, EBITDA margins were 7.9%, uh, which were flat compared to last year, uh, full year FY22. Uh, uh, but if you see our studied ratio and long south share has gone up uh, meaningfully in this year. Now, I understand that you mentioned that uh, franchisee uh, margins would be lower, but uh, again, the contribution from those stores would be uh, pretty low right now. So, if you can throw some color on it, and second, uh, next year for 24, since, since all the stores will be on the FOPA model, uh, what sort of EBITDA range uh, would you guide us? Yeah, so thank you. So it, we should slowly move out from the EBITDA calculation and go to PBT uh, percentage. So uh, otherwise, it is very hard for us to give a guidance because franchisee model is scaling up in such a way that all the expansion is doing, uh, meaning is being done by franchisee. Okay. So uh, EBITDA margin, if you look at this year, it has been in the range of what 4.7, 4.8 percent annually. 
uh, I think we should focus on that, and there should you should see uh, a growth in the PBT margins as a percentage to revenue. Okay, got it. And second, on the inventory days, so um, uh, if I compare from first half, uh, it has gone up from 175 days to 182 days. Uh, I understand that in franchisee, you would be requiring very less uh, inventory days, uh, uh, hardly 10, 15 days. Uh, so, so again, for FI24, uh, where should we see the inventory days? Uh, going because I, I presume it would it should go down substantially. So any guidance on that you should you, if you want to share. So you are talking about the inventory turn, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So inventory turn. If you look at our inventory, uh, the revenue went up by thirty percent and inventory went up by twenty percent. Okay. So we have we are surely in a direction where the inventory turn is going up. And over and above that, uh, we should consider a few things. Uh, one is that we opened 11 own showrooms in the financial year. And uh, we again opened, we, we, we had to keep inventory for the five new showrooms, which we, which we uh, opened in April, wherein franchisee billing will happen only in April, but we would have stocked in March itself. And in this financial year, Akshatrudhya came in April third week instead of last year it was in May. So we had stocked heavily in all our stores by March end itself. That also comes as a stock in uh, March itself. Okay. Over and above all that, we also renovated and actually upgraded 11 to 12 of our tier 1 showrooms to uh, to gain market share as well as to uh, compete the, the the leading players there, okay. And uh, when your gold price increases, of course, we cannot increase the, uh, we cannot keep the same volume because then you will have to invest the same kind of uh, money. For example, 15% there was increase in gold price in the last financial year, and if I keep the same volume in all my stores, I would have to keep 15% additional. Uh, inventory increase there, which we have not done because we have uh, worked in such a way that we have we, we have been uh, not maintaining the same volume at the stores, but some increase in inventory is also because of the gold price increase. And growth, of course, is going to be predominantly franchisee driven, and uh, going forward, inventory turn improvement should be there, and uh, that's what I want to tell you. Yeah, so just uh, to, you know, ask it another way. So for franchisee stores, what would be the inventory days on our books? Uh, uh, if, uh, if you can guide us some range, like it, uh, I, would it be more than 10, 15 days? Or, uh, it will be 15 days of our, yeah, 15 days, uh, we will have to uh, keep inventory on 15 days seven. Okay, okay, thank you. And one last question, uh, uh, wanted to know your payout policy for from here on, I know that for 23, it is 12% of that, but going ahead, should we expect improvement from here on? So we will surely come up with a dividend policy uh, very soon, but our intention for the next financial year, meaning running financial year, is to at least deploy 40 to 50% of our uh, profits generated for repaying debt as well as rewarding investors. Oh, okay. okay, so thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Kanodia from City. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. So on the hi. gold metal loan, uh, you know, you talked about uh, reducing the, uh, you know, the gross borrowings at India level by maybe 15%, uh, yeah. which basically means maybe around, you know, 300 crores uh, worth of uh, repayment of borrowings. So yeah. is it fair to say that at least the gold metal loan will, you know, go, uh, go up by 300 crores because even if we assume that the sanction limit does not change, you will use that repayment of borrowings to increase the gold metal loan. And second related question on that is, you know, uh, for the sanction limit to increase, right, what are the drivers or, you know, I, I mean, how, how can we increase that limit? So first thing is that uh, we will be repaying the debt and the debt repayment will be for the non-GML, okay? It does not mean that the GML as an amount will increase. It only means that the 
proportion of GML versus the other loan will surely increase because the repayment is going to be non-GML. Okay. And for your second question as to how we will increase the GML, it is all meaning what we believe is that first of all we are trying to bring in one or two new banks who can uh, give us GML instead of our non-GML. And again, when we start repaying, we we will surely get into negotiation with banks to increase the GML limit instead of the non-GML. So it is a process. So for a conservative uh, approach, better we don't budget for any increase in GML as an amount except for what, 50, 75 crore. Uh, because that's the way we should do is what I feel. And debt reduction, of course, you can plan in such a way or we can budget in such a way that it comes to 15% of the gross amount in India. And all that will be non gm You know, let, let me ask you a question this way, right? That uh, if you look at the last three years, right, gold metal loan has been around 1,000, 1,100 crores, right? Now, I mean, uh, once you repay the debt, right, your uh, overall borrowing limit remains the same. So effectively, you know, if you want, you can increase the gold metal loan. And given that, you know, GML uh, is a natural hedge and it's also very cost effective, right? Um, because, uh, you know, the, the borrowing cost on GML are really, very attractive. So, I mean, uh, you know, from a strategy perspective, uh, you know, uh, keeping aside, you know, uh, modeling, but uh, really from a strategist perspective, you know, if uh, do you, uh, you know, do you intend to increase that this amount if, if you have the opportunity, uh, you know, just because if you're repaying debt? Yeah, it's a separate set of discussion with banks on that behalf, okay, wherein as we speak, the things in our control, full control is repayment of non-GML loans, okay. To increase the limit in GML, it is again a discussion with the banks which we will have to do, which we will surely do, but we don't want to commit anything for this financial year because, uh, meaning, it's, it's not in our full control because banks also see that this much percentage of loans should be gold loan, this much not gold loan. And there are banks in our consortium where they don't have a gold metal loan, uh, what you call product itself. So we are trying to bring in one or two new banks who have a gold loan, uh, what you call vertical with them, etc. So the interest okay. saving will be higher than the reduction of 15% loan. Because even if we reduce 15% loan, the interest saving will be proportionately much higher because we are going to reduce the non-GML quotient and not the GML quotient. Sure, sure, uh, got it. And a second question just on the cash flow, right? Uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with the incremental uh, cash flow you would generate in Middle East, because, you know, uh, in Middle East you have the intention to do, uh, you know, the franchise course as well. So first, uh, you know, from uh, whatever profits that that is being generated into Middle East, uh, you know, what's the strategy there? Do you want to uh, deploy stores, uh, you know, open more uh, company-owned stores in Middle East, or will that pad be, you know, bought back into India? And the second thing is, uh, you know, in, in terms of sale of non-core assets, while on aircraft, you know, uh, you said that, uh, you know, most probably it will happen in one edge. Uh, but the second leg of non-core asset is uh, sale of land. So, uh, you know, if you can provide any color, any, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, you know in, in, any guidance in terms of when can you uh, start expecting cash flows uh, coming in from uh, landfill, uh, that would be very really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so at least, as you know, our plan was to, in the last financial year itself, we wanted to try franchise, okay? But we don't want to block our expansion there so we were like in india also for example uh, we have opened for example 11 showrooms all 11 showrooms in the q4 we wanted to open as franchise only but at the end what happened nine was franchise and two was own and both those two we actually converted to franchise we will convert to franchise very soon because there was delay from there for getting their uh, gst and things like that so we jumped in and made it our own store and we will uh, make it a franchise store in the future, very soon. So same in the Middle East. Our intention in the Middle East is to expand only by franchise. That is our intention. And conversion we want to do in such a way that when we open three showrooms, okay, one will be uh, converted. So three franchise, if we open, one will be own store conversion and two will be new. That is what we want to do because otherwise franchisee will not be able to make money uh, because the base revenue will not satisfy to take care of the operating cost there, the fixer operating cost, meaning the, uh, the uh, corporate overheads.
okay so we will do that way in middle east and then bring back the cash to india and, and that's our intention in middle east and cash flow from aircraft we we should we should expect what 5 to 6 months for the full cash to come in and that proceeds will also be used for uh, repaying the non gml debt no my second question was on the land that i understand you know aircraft cash will come in by uh, 1h24 uh, any any clarity in terms of you know when the second i'm sorry to interrupt uh, sir i would request you to kindly rejoin the chat sure. for the following yeah one second so this was his earlier question i would just answer so we're in debt reduction plan no when we repay the 300 400 crore debt we will start to negotiate with the banks to uh, release certain collaterals and then we will divest that also and bring it back to the system it's a long term sure. process don't budget anything for this year and it's a process meaning it will take 2 3 years for us to do all this but we will start this year sure very also thank you yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of bhavan shah from samiksha capital private limited please go ahead yeah thank you uh, could you explain the differences in terms for gold metal loans uh, that you get in india versus middle east Yeah, India we get the gold metal loan at about three point seven five percent. In the Middle East, it's slightly higher than that. It must be in the region about five percent. What about collateral? Collateral, uh, it, it functions the same in a, in a similar way. You have to keep margin, and uh, rest of the thing works in a similar way. No, but I thought in India you had to provide uh, uh, some other collateral, real estate or something, you know, which limited so, how much. So, Oh, you you are asking for the other. Okay, so here in India, initially when we had taken the line of credit from these banks, the line of credit required 35% real estate collateral or some other collateral. That requirement is not there. But for gold metal loan specifically, if you ask, uh, whatever you have to keep, the margin that you have to keep, it is similar across Indian Middle East. So in Middle East, you are saying you don't have any additional. collateral so, that you give because those those arrangements were because middle east uh, we entered middle east in 2013 14 uh, by then these structures were not uh, because our india structure is even older than that mm-hmm. and uh, you mentioned that you were committed to some i think you say i will forgot about you said 40 to 50% of uh, profit uh, used for paying debt and dividend but i think uh, what uh, investors will look for is a committed policy on payout whether it's dividend or buyback so would you want to spell that out and uh, if not why why not yeah so we will surely give you clarity on that uh, the board is yet to come out with a dividend policy as such but we will surely update you uh, very shortly on that okay thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants kindly limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question please rejoin the queue thank you we have the next question from the line of ages lakhani from unify capital please go ahead yeah hi rimesh congratulations on the numbers thank you uh, and uh, congratulations on the phenomenal uh, 23 and wishing you the best for 24 uh, if you could just uh, spell out uh, you know the franchise uh, model again because uh, my understanding and i could be wrong was that the capex was likely to be borne by the franchise and you know from the gross margin you know uh, a certain percentage was shared by the franchise certain percentage was borne Uh, you know, came to you from the gross margin, and then you had a certain OPEX line, and you were, uh, you know, expected to earn four to five percent on a PBT. Uh, so, is that understanding correct? Could you just spell out uh, that, you know, if it's a twenty-five hundred square foot, uh, uh, you know, showroom, uh, how will the unit economics work? Yeah, so uh, your understanding is perfectly okay. Wherein there are two models. One model is that capex, meaning fit out plus inventory, will be invested by the franchisee partner. Okay, and uh, there will be a margin uh, share between franchisee partner and Kalyan Jewelers, and uh, we take care of the operations, meaning the staff, etc. And we will end up in a situation where we make five percent PVT. Okay, that is the first model. second model is that they invest only in inventory and the fit out is done by us if we do the fit out we take 1% of the revenue also 
as uh, asset uh, what do you call uh, uh, maintenance charge like amc but pbt of course instead of 5 it will become 6 but uh, so ebitda will of, of course yeah instead of 5 it will become 6 but when you come to the uh, depreciation will come no so that will be almost the same and there will be no impact in the pbt okay so broadly under both the models you will continue to okay so you will continue to net 4 and a half to 5% under both of the models exactly uh, okay but then tell me something uh, you know on a say uh, on a 2500 uh, square feet showroom the capex cost will be uh, you know much smaller right so uh, why would the franchisees be willing to give up that 1% incremental for uh, i don't know let's say a 3 crore capex for a 2500 square feet uh, showroom because roughly you do 5 crore for yeah. the larger four thousand most of the showrooms which we opened are in the range of 3500 square feet when the capex will be in the range of 3.5 crore okay okay so and the inventory is there will be roughly uh, 20 22 crore in the model which we are doing now uh, the lease agreement today is done by kalyan jewelers with the landlord and they are investing for the capex there okay we don't want to actually do the lease in their name because if there is any uh, kind of uh, misunderstanding with the franchise owner we don't want the property also to go uh, because of the misunderstanding with the franchise partners okay so for them there are two ways one is that they are they want to invest in metal instead of uh, fit out which gives them actually more comfort number 2 is that the lease is in our name and when they have to do the fit out in their uh, what do you call from their pocket that also they wish to actually not do like that so uh, when we invest we calculate amc incorporating the actual capex and cost of capital Okay, so everything is rooted through you. So even if a franchisee decides to, yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Desh Pandey from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm just a uh, uh, congratulations on this uh, good set of numbers. And the pre-tax ROI, I see, uh, we've seen an improvement uh, to thirteen percent. Uh, would you be uh, willing to share some target, uh, two to three year target, on you know where you see the free tax ROI? So I don't want to give you a target, but one thing what we should understand is that the return on capital is going to be anyway uh, going up because uh, we are going with the FOCO model of expansion, wherein the investment is small and the returns are higher. So uh, directionally, you should see a lot of improvement. and also you will see lot of reduction in capital employed because the divestment of certain non core assets etc and uh, rewarding investors etc and that should be the way we should look at so i don't want to give you a target but you, you can easily meaning you, you you should understand the way forward for the next 2 3 years the returns are going to be anyway better yeah. Right. We saw a good improvement this year, so hope we can do that. Second, uh, my second question was on the south side. Uh, you mentioned about uh, converting some of them to the franchisee model. So, would you be uh, willing to put a number to how many stores you're looking to convert uh, in the south uh, to uh, franchisee? So we don't want to because we have not tried a pilot. Okay, so post the pilot, then only we will set up a target for how much stores we should convert from. south non south to uh, south uh, fran uh, own store to franchise okay enquiry is very strong but we we are capping ourselves to the pilot to be completed and then we will give you or we will internally put a target of how much to convert etc so the pilot would be completed in the first half of first quarter so ideally we should start the pilot uh, conservatively by the h1 or Right. Thank you, sir. That's thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from the line of Rajiv V from D A M Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So this uh, additional capex you did uh, because of the change in franchisee, uh, the second route which you have cho uh, chosen, is, is there a clause uh, in which you sell it back later, uh, let's say as the store starts delivering a little better number? No, no, I, I could not understand it. Okay. So instead of AMC, the, the, the one percent AMC, you basically recover, uh, you know, uh, recover the entire three crores or, or, or some consideration and lighten up the balance sheet. Yeah, that we have not considered it right now, but yeah, we can consider it, consider it, consider it later. So, uh, but as of now, nothing. And, and it is safe to assume that all the remaining uh, 52 or, or the, the remaining part of the 52 are also on the similar uh, kind of uh, arrangement. Yes, right? all that. Yeah. The signed LOI 52 is all this model. Sure. And that's all. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitin Borija from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I have only one question left. So, can you quantify the amount you told we will be selling some non-core assets this year for debt reduction? So, can you quantify the amount of how much is going to come from non-core? And after this selling, do we have any other non-core assets which will be monetized later? So, 134 pros is the first round of non-core asset divestment, which will completely go for debt reduction. So we and now uh, there is only one chopper there, which is a 30 crore uh, what do you call book value. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, all the non-core asset is a task wherein you will have to repay the debt and then negotiate with the bank, take it out, and then resell, etc. Which meaning it's it's not a it's not as easy as what we are doing for the aircraft and chopper. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, this 134 crore, the deal has been done. That is our first round, and we will do it very shortly. And uh, the real estate, etc., we will start the process this year. And Chopper also, I don't want to comment as of now, because first let us complete these two aircraft and then uh, commit on the third one. So, so, what would be the total value of all the non-core assets? If you can give some ballpark number. Around 500 uh, plus crores. Okay, okay, okay. Understood, sir. This 500 crore will be going to monetize later this year or maybe next year. Yeah. So yes. So uh, 500 plus aircraft. Okay, to be clear. Okay, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.